So, stimuli and responses in humans. So, what is stimuli? So, constant changes in the surrounding, that is what is known as stimuli. So, what is stimulus? Stimulus is actually the singular form of stimuli. So, examples of stimuli include uh, light, sound, and chemical substances. So, humans use their sensory organs to detect stimuli. And the five sensory organs that we have will be the eyes, ears, nose, skin, and tongue. So, um, each sensory organs have their own sense. For example, eyes has the sense of sight, ears, sense of hearing, nose, sense of smell, tongue, sense of taste, and skin, sense of touch. So first, let's uh, look at the eyes. This will be the external structures of the eyes, uh, which is the sclera, iris, and the pupil. Um, and this is actually the um, uh, anatomy of the eyes, uh, as well as the functions of the eyes. I think this will be uh, self-explanatory, so I think I'll skip this part. Uh, the main um, structure of the eyes that uh, actually converts the light into nerve impulses would be the retina. So first, let's uh, take a deeper look at the retina. So, the retina has two types of photoreceptors, which are the rod cells and also the cone cells. So, rod cells. Rod cells are actually sensitive to different light in intensities, uh, which includes um, faint light, but they are not sensitive to colors of light not sensitive to colors of light so um, we have the cone cells which are actually sensitive to the color of lights but only under bright conditions and there are three different types of cone cells which are sensitive to red light green light and blue light so as you can see here this will be the anatomy of the retina where there are rod cells and also cone cells so remember, rod cells uh, detect a light intensities, while cone cells um, are sensitive to the colors of the light. So, let's just jump forward um, to the mechanism of sight. So here, as we can see, there's an object, and the light rays from the object will enter the eyes first through the cornea. The eye, the um, aqueous humor, the eye lens, and then the vitreous humor, and finally hit the retina. So the function of all these structures are to focus the light, uh, so it hits the retina. So the object that is formed in the retina is actually inverted and also smaller than the um, object size. So what happens when it hits the retina? The light rays stimulates the photoreceptors to produce nerve impulses that are later sent to the brain. And the, in the brain, the object will be interpreted to be upright and uh, the necessary responses can be made by the brain. So let's look at the ears. So the ears is uh, primarily divided into three sections, which will be the outer ear, the middle ear, and also the inner ear. So, the outer ear consists of the ear lobe and the ear canal, while the middle ear consists of the ear drum, ossicles, oval window, and also the eustachian tube. As for the inner ear, it consists of the semicircular canals, auditory nerves, and also cochlea. So, let's jump forward. Um, uh, these are actually the functions of uh, the ear structures, but I think this um, is self-explanatory. So, I'll jump forward to the mechanism of hearing so the mechanism of hearing is actually kind of simple so what happens is um, the ear lobe um, collects the sound and is channeled into the ear canal so the ear canal channels it to the ear drum where the sound is transformed into uh, vibrations so these vibrations travels uh, through the ossicles where it is um, amplified and uh, sends the vibration to the oval window. The oval window transfers the vibration to the cochlea, where the cochlea converts the sound vibrations to nerve impulses. So these nerve impulses will be carried to the brain by the auditory nerves. 
So in the brain, um, the, the impulse will be interpreted and uh, necessary actions will be taken. The next sensory organ that we are going to take a look at will be the skin. So the skin is actually the largest sensory organ in the human body. And it is um, divided into three layers which will be the epidermis, dermis and the fat layer. And it also has five types of receptor which will be the cold receptor, pain receptor, heat receptor, touch receptor and pressure receptor. And it is actually very important to know the location of uh, the receptors such as the pain receptor is located in the epidermis while heat receptor, touch receptor and cold receptors are located on the top region of the dermis and pressure receptor is located deeper in the dermis. So when the receptor in the skin is stimulated, nerve impulses are produced and sent through the nervous system to the brain to be interpreted and to produce an appropriate response. Now, let's just take a look at the sensitivity of skin on different parts of the body towards stimuli. So, the sensitivity of the skin depends on two main factors, which will be the number of receptors present and also the thickness of the skin epidermis. So, for example, the tip of the finger is really sensitive towards touch because the tip of the finger has large number of touch receptors and the epidermis is thin. This is the same case for the tongue, nose and the lips. Um, as for the elbow, the sole of the foot and the back of the body, it is less sensitive to touch. This is because it has a thicker skin epidermis as well as a smaller number of touch receptors at that region. So let's take a look at the nose as a sensory receptor. So the nose is a sensory organ of smell. Smells are chemical substances present in the air and about 10 million sensory cells for smell are located in the roof of the nasal cavity. As you can see in this um, figure, uh, these are the sensory cells of smell and this is the layer of mucus that covers it and the importance of the mucus uh, wait i'll explain in a while so um what happens is um the chemical substances in the air will dissolve in this layer of mucus and this stimulates the cells to produce nerve impulses so without the presence of mucus um, the chemical substances will not be able to dissolve and this will not produce any nerve impulses then these nerve impulses are sent to the brain to be interpreted and to determine the type of smell. Now let's talk about the tongue. So the tongue is the sensory organ of taste. So uh, when you look at the tongue, it might appear flat but it actually has many papillae on the tongue. So the papillae consist of hundreds of taste buds and each taste bud consists of 10 to 50 taste receptors. So these taste receptors are able to detect five different types of taste which will be sweet, salty, sour, bitter and umami. Um, so the function of the taste buds are um, pretty similar to the nose where it also requires uh, a fluid to dissolve the chemical substances to trigger the taste buds. So when the food is chewed, Part of the chemical substances in the food is dissolved in the saliva. So these dissolved chemical substances will diffuse into the taste buds through their pores and stimulate the taste receptors and this produces nerve impulses. So these nerve impulses are then sent to the brain and interpreted as sweet, salty, sour, bitter, umami or combination of all these tastes. So now let's look at the sensitivity of different parts of the tongue to taste stimuli. So like I said just now, there are five different types of taste that your tongue can um, taste which will be the sweet, salty, sour, bitter and umami taste. So uh, different regions of the tongue are more sensitive to different types of taste. So for example, the front of your tongue is more sensitive to sweet taste while the sides are more sensitive to sour and salty taste. 
and the back of the tongue is more sensitive to bitter taste and the center of the tongue is more sensitive to the umami taste and this is um, a diagram that shows um, exactly where the sensitivity the sensitivity of uh, your your different taste receptors lies so um, now let's see why taste receptor and also your sense of smell is actually a very good friend so uh, here's a fun activity that you can do to uh, actually uh, understand this further but um, let me just explain to you uh, what happens when you try to taste your food so when you are going to taste your food the flavor uh, of the food uh, is actually the combination of your sense of taste and also the sense of smell so um, the chemical substances from the food travels to the nose and um, also dissolves in the saliva so you can uh, taste it and also smell it um, without the sense of smell uh, the food will taste less flavorful um, this is also the reason why when you're having flu and there's a thick layer of mucus um, the chemical substances are not able to penetrate deep enough to stimulate uh, the um, nerves in your nose so uh, this causes uh, the lack of flavor when you uh, eat when you are having flu so we know that humans have powerful audiovisual sensors but as powerful as the sensors are we still have limitation for the sensors so for example for the limitation of sight we cannot see very tiny objects such as uh, microorganisms as well as very distant objects such as the planet jupiter we also can't see objects that are behind an opaque surface and this limitation of sight includes optical illusions and blind spots so these are a few examples of optical illusions so for a it might seem that the line is longer for pq compared to rs but in reality it's actually the same length so um, for b the spot in the center for x it might seem larger than y but in reality it's actually the same size and the same goes to c this is an optical illusion which shows the sides of the square to seem curved but in reality it's actually a straight line the sides has straight lines so these are optical illusions that might trick your brain to thinking into thinking that um, something is um, not at it not as it seems so another sight limitation is the blind spot so um, the blind spot is the point where all the optic nerve exit from the eye so at this region the retina is not sensitive to the light so we are actually an unaware of the presence of the blind spot in the eye because it's not possible for the image of the same object to fall on the blind spot of both eyes simultaneously and you can actually carry out this uh, small experiment to investigate your blind spot but uh, this can be done uh, using your textbook there's actually various devices that can be used to overcome the limitation of sight for example the light microscope and the scanning electron microscope can be used to visualize microscopic objects or microorganisms uh, the binoculars as well as telescopes can be used to visualize objects that are too far away for the normal naked eyes to detect um, the ultrasound machine and also the x-ray machine can be used to visualize uh, uh, objects that are behind an opaque surface defects of sight and ways to correct them so defects of sights include uh, short-sightedness long-sightedness and astigmatism so what is short-sightedness Short-sightedness is the inability to see distant object clearly. This is because the image is focused in front of the retina. It can be caused by eye lens that is too thick or eyeball that is too long. So, an easy way to correct this is to use a concave lens. 
So long sightedness is the inability to see near objects clearly. This is because the image is focused behind the retina. So the defect is caused by eye lens that, eye lens that is too thin or eyeball that is too short. So an easy way to correct this is by using a convex lens. Okay, so for astigmatism, it is seeing a part of an object clear, clearer than the rest of the object. This defect is caused by the uneven curvature of the cornea of eye lens. So, an easy way to correct astigmatism is by using cylindrical lenses. So, limitation of hearing are limitation in the ability of the ear to hear sound. We can only hear sounds in the frequency of 20 to 20,000 hertz. But this frequency range is actually different for each individual. So for a person who is actually getting older, the frequency range for his hearing might get narrower. This is because the eardrum becomes less elastic. So these are a few examples of devices that help to overcome the limitation of hearing. For example, the stethoscopes help us to listen to heartbeats while the loudspeaker help us to amplify the sound so a person that is located far away is able to hear the sound. Defects of hearing and ways to correct them. So uh, the defects of hearing are caused uh, mainly by the damage to the ear. This can be due to infection of microorganism, injury, aging process, or continuous exposure to loud sounds. So the damage to the outer ear and the middle ear can be easily corrected, but the damage to the inner ear is more difficult to be corrected. So. Uh, this advancement in the hearing aids is an example of how innovation and technology are applied to help solve the defects of hearings. The thing to keep in mind is the five senses that is given to us is actually a gift from God. So try to avoid unhealthy li lifestyles and try to take precautionary measures when working in a high risk jobs. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Thank you.